There is a definite method or procedure to use when it comes to deciding what controls you will apply to manage a hazard in the workplace. If you identify a hazard, it's not simply a matter of, oh, well, I'll put on a pair of gloves and I'll be okay. What we have here is what's called a hierarchy of controls. This is an internationally recognized standard for deciding controls to manage hazards in a workplace. It's called a hierarchy because the most effective controls are at the top. And as you progress down the chart, we get down to the least effective controls. In all cases, when you identify a hazard in your workplace, the very first thing you should try and do is eliminate it. That means get it off the site entirely. Elimination is the very best control for managing hazards. The difficulty with elimination, of course, is that it's not going to work a lot of times because the hazard that we've identified is actually part of the job. And if we eliminate that hazard entirely, then the job won't get done. So if you can eliminate it, do, but if you can't, then you need to go to the next step, which is substitution. That is substituting what is causing the hazard with something that will pre present less of a risk in doing the job. I'll give you some examples. Maybe the hazard you've identified has to do with mains operated electrical equipment. Well, could you substitute that mains operated electrical equipment with a battery operated piece of equipment instead? That would likely bring the risk down. Let's say the hazard is associated with having to go up a height and you're using a ladder to get from ground level up to a height. Could you reduce the risk by using an elevated work platform or scaffolding? Is the hazard caused by a toxic chemical that's part of your job? Well, could you substitute that toxic chemical with something less toxic and still accomplish the job? Substitution is a very good way of bringing down the risk associated with the hazard. The third step here, isolate. Now to isolate a hazard simply means that you put shields, barriers, covers, signs to keep people away from it or to keep it away from people. Isolating is a good way of reducing risk associated with a hazard. The fourth point here, changing procedure. Sometimes we have to look at doing the job in a different way to bring the risk down. Now, I'll illustrate it like this. Oftentimes there's a fast way of doing the job and there's a slightly slower way of doing the job. The slightly slower way is often safer. Would it be better not to choose that, take a little care and change the procedure accordingly? Maybe the conditions are not ideal for doing the job right at the moment. Maybe you're wanting to get on a roof and it's a bit of a slope and it's a wet roof. Then waiting until the roof is dry might be a procedural change that you could make to bring the risk down. Maybe having an extra person as part of your team to help you do this particular job would be a procedural change that you could bring into place to lower the risk. Substitution, isolation, changing procedure. Notice what's right at the bottom? Personal protective equipment. Often the very first thing that people go for, but in this hierarchy of controls, clearly identified as the least effective means of managing a hazard. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't work, but we need to make sure that we've always looked at eliminate, substitute, isolate, change your procedure before we think the only thing I've got left is PPE. Oftentimes you'll find it's not just a case of just a piece of PPE, it's a case of having some form of substitution, some form of isolation, some form of procedure change and PPE that you'll combine to successfully bring the risk down to an acceptable level on your workplace.